And the fluffy kitten played with that ball of string all through the night. On a lighter note, Hadley ho, HQ Torinos, and welcome to Simpsons Trivia Night. This Sunday, 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 your life will be changed forever. One night only, one night only, one night only. If you miss this, you better be dead or in jail. And if you're in jail, break out. Can I offer you a cup of coffee-flavored Beverine? Ah, sweet liquor eases the pain. How about I offer you HQ, the Live Bubble Game Show, where you answer questions to win cash. I'm not a leather muppet. I'm your host, Scott McClure. You might remember me from such savage questions as, it's bird's nest soup, stupid, and octopuses, the hippopotami of the sea. I'm live from Hawaii's beautiful Molokai Island. We're not just for lepers anymore. How can I prove we're live? Penis. And there are a lot of you live with me, putting the U in HQ, including Matt Demur, Haley Huffman, Sharon, Nathan, Karina, Courtney, Adam, and Alicia, and Daria with a birthday. Tonight, we'll see Angela Lansbury walk on hot coals. Excitement, she wrote. I'm also gonna ask you 15 questions about your favorite TV family and their neighborinos in Springfield, Springfield. It's a hell of a town. The schoolyard's up and the shopping mall's down. Don't worry, kids. I'm only asking about seasons one through 10. Wink, I hope you're prepared for an unforgettable luncheon. If you correctly answer all 15 questions, you'll be rewarded with a share of our cash prize, which is 10,000 Duff beers, 10,000 Donner's party supplies, 10,000 delightfully devilish dollars. Think of it, with all that moolah, you can afford a crystal bucket for your slop water, a brand new filthy blanket, chocolate microscopes, and you know those uh, guitars that are like double guitars? Also, more rubber stamps. You can also earn points with every question you answer. That's right, there are only a few shows left to win those points and level up before our season finale on Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Levels are like extra lives that don't expire. They're free passes through the hallways of Springfield Elementary. Krusty brand extra lives can also be used in addition to the levels. Get your extra life now, why not? It's got that Krusty brand seal of approval. You can also use them on words. Have you heard the word about HQ Words? If you can spell, you can win on our brand new show hosted by Anna rolls Royceman every night at 9.30 p.m. Now, hit the Join Beta button for a special invitation. It's gonna pop up right there. If you haven't joined already, you're gonna wanna do that. I know I've told you the rules before, but it's my job to be repetitive. My job, my job. Repetitiveness is my job. Well, you have the rules, you have the promos. Now we play the waiting game. Ah, the waiting game sucks. Let's play HQ. HQDs, it's times like this. I'm glad I flunked out of that Mexican med school. The sidewalks are for regular, not fancy quizzing. Will you prove your Simpsons smart or will you be banished to the land of wind and ghosts? Men alive there are. Men alive in here. And women, over a half a million of you live for the greatest story ever hq -led. As I said to Dolores Montenegro in Calling All Quakers, have it your way, baby. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get this very special Simpsons show on the road. Cumero, numero uno. Who shot? Mr. Burns, Maggie, Scratchy, or Tito Puente? Oh, this would normally be a challenging question, but come on, it's Simpsons night. The real ones know it. Dozens of people are gunned down each day in Springfield, but but until now, them was between season six and seven, Burns was shot by little Maggie. What in the name of Saint Ephistocris? If 398,055 slack-jawed gutters in the game after Q1, we lost 80,000 you there. Your scurvy schemes have earned you a one-way passage to Q2. What was the name of Homer's snow plowing company? Plow this, plow now and how, or Mr. Plow? We did not put Plow King as an option, you'll notice. I don't want to be too savage out the gate. But come on, you know it. You're not fooled. I know you know how it goes. Or do you prefer the rap? I'm Mr. Plow, and I'm here to say I'm the plowingest guy in the USA. I got a big plow and I move a lot of things just like your cow if you have one. 348,729 not having a cow. You're calling Klondike 53226. For Q3, but before we get there, special bulletin. Neil Patrick Harris 
of the Smurfs and the Smurfs 2 fame will be taking over HQ this Thursday, January 10th. Yes, that's right. This is real. Both words and trivia. Our new show, HQ Words, has its first celeb guest host at a special celebrity time, 9 p.m. Eastern, for a big $10,000 prize. Then MPH will host a special How I Met Your Mother edition of HQ at 9.30 p.e.t. We're switching the times on you. It's all Neil, all real, and it all starts at 9 p.m. Eastern this Thursday. Do not miss it. But back to tonight's quiz. Q3, in Bart the Daredevil, what destroys the Simpsons car? A runaway monorail, Malibu Stacy's new hat, or Truckosaurus? Monorail, monorail. Gee, everyone is so nice here at the Monster Truck Rally. Homer found a parking spot right in the sights of the amazing, the astounding, the unbelievable. Truckosaurus. And Truckosaurus feels very badly about what happened. He would like you to enjoy a half bottle of domestic champagne. All 254,752 of you who got that one right. Speaking of trucks, uh, what's happening this Tuesday? It's Trucking Tuesday on HQ, 9 p.m. That's right, we're giving out $50,000 plus an all new, brand new Chevy Silverado, their strongest, most advanced Silverado yet. It's all going down Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. But back to tonight's quiz, because I'm so excited for it. It's getting good, it's just warming up. Q4, according to the dictionary in The Simpsons, how would you pull a homer? Keep your wits close, unsurprise everyone, or succeed despite idiocy? Who'd have thought a nuclear reactor would be so complicated? An impending meltdown leads Homer to desperately press random buttons until he saves Springfield. And by this episode's end, the dictionary defines pulling a homer as Succeeding despite now idiocy. To ages. It's right there in the dictionary. Uh, succeed despite idiocy. 315,644. I'm awarding you a ham, a plaque, a coupon book, and my personal thumbs up. For the rest of you who got it wrong, uh, hey, look at that dog. Isn't that something? Q5. What is March's pet name for Bart? My special little guy, Mr. Bridges, or firstborn last nerve. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Is Homer a hero? The answer is no. I'm still stuck on the last question. Bart's been called a lot of things over the years. A menace to society, Bartman, a menace to Australian society, and Marge has called him plenty of things too, but all throughout the early seasons, he's a special little guy. 288,301 getting this one right, possibly pulling a homer. I don't know, did you know it? Doesn't matter if you really did, you got it right and you're getting Q6. Which of these is the name of one of the seven duffs? Uppity, ornery, or queasy? Duff beer for me, duff beer for you. I'll have a duff, you'll have one too. Naming all seven duffs is mucho impressive since they haven't all been named canonically on the show. The expanding universe reveals edgy, dizzy, and sleazy, but the four named in Selma's choice? Look, it's the seven duffs! There's Tipsy, and there's Queasy, there's Surly, and Remorseful! Surly only looks out for one guy, Surly. Fun fact, I dressed as Surly for Halloween in college. 100,000 plus of you, you fail HQ? Unpossible. Well, it might be possible. 216,128 got this right. Go into Duff Gardens and the Beer Aquarium at Q7. Which character is known for his deathly bee sting allergy? Superintendent Chalmers, Waylon Smithers, or Mo Sislak? Oh, Tuttle Sunday trousers. While out for a brisk bike ride in 22 short films about Springfield, a bee sting was nearly fatal for the severely allergic Waylon Smithers? <laughs> I'm allergic to bee stings. They, they caused me to uh, die. Luckily, he was able to pedal to the hospital with minimal nagging from Mr. Burns. 159,164. Now pump those scrawny chicken legs, you stuporous funkers. On to Q8 you go. The proposed spinoff Chief Wiggum PI was set in what city? New Orleans, Miami, or Beverly Hills? Spinoff. Is there any word more thrilling to the human soul? Starring Chief Wiggum, Principal Seymour Skinner as Skinny Boy and Ralph, this segment of the Simpsons spinoff showcase featured a Marty something parade and Wiggum shooting up Tipitinas in what could only be... New Orleans, The Big Easy, Sweet Lady Gumbo, Old 
Swampy. 94,039 got this right. I guess so far this quiz has been the big easy for you. You're flawless through Q9. Which of these is not a real name Bart used in a prank call to Moe's Tavern? Jacques Strap, Stu Pitt, or B.O. Problem? Bart, the original crank yanker. Ah, oh, IP Freely, Alcoholic, Amanda Hug and Kiss, Mike Crotch. Of course, it backfired that one time. Moe's was so crowded, there really was a huge ass present. But go down that long list of Bart's jokes, names, and you won't find a Stu Pitt. Mm -mm. 80,797 got that right. The rest of you, you're a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt and a smelly butt and you like to lick your own butt. Q10. What weird European candy did Uder have in his first Simpsons appearance? Apfelugit, jelly nuts, or marzipan joy joys? Oh, relax, kids. I got a gut feeling Uder's around here somewhere. <laughs> After all, we've all got a little ooter in us, don't we? <laughs> in fact, you could say we just ate ooter and he's in our stomachs right now. Uh, scratch that last one. Treehouse of Horror 4 was where Uta made his debut in the role of exchange student number one, who no one wants to sit next to. And he came armed with Germany's answer to the Fifth Avenue bar, the Wenglerstrasse bar. Oh, and also- I also have a bag of multi-pan joy joys. Yeah, mit iodine. Demasa Ben Choi Choice, who wants a lick of my flavor wax? 62,066 of you are getting a lick of Q11. Remember, there are 15 questions tonight, $10,000 on the line here in Springfield. Q11, which is one way of identifying the phony Pope? Shaggy mullet, foam finger, or high top sneakers? This is Kent Brockman with a special report from the Channel 6 Newscopter. At the end of the Wizard of Evergreen Terrace episode, Kent alerted the Springfield area to a counterfeit pontiff making the rounds, though we only catch this tail end of the report. Authorities say the phony Pope can be recognized by his high top sneakers and incredibly foul mouth. It's so good. It's so good. High top sneakers on the phony Pope. 54,446 detected him. The rest of you, your llama just bit Ted Kennedy. Coming up next, Q12. What location is mentioned in the Camp Krusty theme song? Mount Avalanche, Forest No Return, or Crocodile Creek? Hail to the Camp Krusty by the shores of Big Snake Lake. Though your swings are rusty, we know they'll never break. Hail to the Camp Krusty below Mount Avalanche. We will always love Camp Krusty. A registered, registered trademark of the Krusty Corporation. All rights reserved. 36,111 surviving this avalanche, gorging yourselves on the trough of freedom. And Q13, who are Eastern Europe's favorite cat and mouse team, bourgeois and proletariat, Vladislav and humorous, or worker and parasite? We're starting to get obscure here. Q13, cited by creator Matt Groening as one of the funniest moments in Simpsons history, this Soviet-era replacement cartoon underscored Krusty's freefall into ratings oblivion after Gabbo stole the spotlight and Itchy and Scratchy. What's this about Gabbo? Worker and Parasite. <laughs> what the hell was that? Gabbo, Gabbo, Gabbo! Made Krusty play Worker and Parasite. 28,937 got this right. You know, Alan, all the HQs in the, in the HQ universe are a bunch of SOBs. They're a bunch of SOBs. Oh, Q14. What therapist helped Marge with her fear of flying? Dr. Lowenstein, Dr. Zweig, or Dr. Pryor? What's wrong with Marge? Is she hungry? Sleepy? Gassy? Is it gas? Is it gas? It's gas, isn't it? The Simpsons get free tickets to anywhere in the United States, except Alaska and Hawaii, the freak states. But Marge freaks out and needs to see a quack whose name she doesn't quite grasp. Whenever the wind whistles through the leaves, I think Lowenstein, Lowenstein. My name is Zweig. Lowenstein. Lowenstein, Lowenstein. Not Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zweig, 21,423 knew this one. Did you know the doctor voiced by Anne Bancroft? Mm, the late great. 21,423, getting this right. 
8,000 plus of you, would you please leave without a fuss right now? But for the 21,000 who've made it this far to Q14, I got one more question for you. Q15, it all boils down to this for all the pink frosted donuts, for all the marbles, for all the money. Well, 10,000 at least, it's a lot. Q15, which of these movies did Troy McClure not appear in? Make out King of Montana, David vs. Super Goliath, or Stop That Dream? You may remember him from such films as Look Who's Still Oinking, Sorry Wrong Closet, They Came to Burgle Carnegie Hall, Today We Kill, Tomorrow We Die, Gladys the Groovy Mule, Mommy What's Wrong With That Man's Face, David vs. Super Goliath, and Make Out King of Montana. But stop that dream, we just made it up, it's not a real thing, oh, none of them are really real, but 10,037, you're the real deal, you are so smart, you are so smart, you are so smart, SMRT, I mean SMART, you want HQ, baby! <laughs>